This video introduces a formal method for doing a pole placement design using state feedback. The first video introduces the concept of state feedback and demonstrate that it moves poles. So if you have a state feedback of the form u equals minus kx on a state space model x dot equals ax plus bu, then the closed loop takes this form x dot equals a minus bk times x, and clearly the closed loop is different from the open loop. However, it was shown that the selection of k to achieve specified poles may be non-simple in general if you just do a brute force computation of the eigenvalues of a minus bk, because the dependence on the parameters of k is non-simple. So this video shows that the computation can be made much more straightforward if you use control canonical forms and therefore you can actually place the poles exactly where you want relatively easily. First a reminder then of the control canonical form. If you have an underlying transfer function model of the form such as this then the corresponding canonical form looks like this and you'll notice that what we've done is we've taken the parameters of the denominator and we've placed them on the top row. So you'll see the parameters of the denominator polynomial are all placed on the top row. And that gives you the control canonical form. And then we've got these ones on the subdiagonal and zeros elsewhere. And for B, we've got a one at the top and zeros elsewhere. So this is the control canonical form. But what's most important is you remember this link here between the parameters of your denominator polynomial and where those parameters appear in the A matrix. So an observation. In control canonical form, the eigenvalues are determined solely by the parameters along the top row of the A matrix. So there, again, is a reminder of the A matrix. And you'll see if you did the determinant of lambda i minus A, you'll see this coefficient A n minus 1 comes from there. The coefficient A0 comes from there, and similarly for all the other coefficients on the top row. So there's a corollary. We can place the poles precisely if we're able to select the top row of A precisely. So if we can set the parameters in this top row, then we can set the parameters of this polynomial precisely, and therefore we can set the, the uh, closed loop poles that we want. Let's look at state feedback then in control canonical form. So a key thing is in control canonical form, B, the B matrix takes this form, one at the top and zeros elsewhere. And let's assume that the state feedback can be written as parameters K1 to Kn. Now, if I calculate BK, it takes this form here. And what do you notice? Most important thing is it's got non-zero values only on the top row and everywhere else it's got zeros. And the other thing to notice is that the top row coefficients are independent of each other. I've got k1 here, k2 here, all the way to kn. They are independent of each other. I can choose each of these values separately. Now, can we form the closed loop state space model by inspection if we do state feedback on a canonical form? So what we're doing is we're saying, all right, I'm going to do my u equals minus kx, apply it to my model, x dot equals ax plus bu, and find the a minus bk matrix. But I'm going to assume that a and b are in canonical form. And this is what happens. a minus bk has no change in all the rows except the top row. And in the top row, what do you notice? The first element is affected by the parameter k1. The second element is affected by the parameter k2. And all the way down to the nth element, which is affected by the parameter kn. And if I calculate my closed loop pole polynomial, I will see the first coefficient is affected by k1. And all the way down to the last coefficient affected by kn. So I have got an explicit handle on the coefficients of the closed loop pole polynomial. So I can choose those coefficients explicitly by choosing the parameters ki. 
some examples then to show you how you might do this. Here I've got an A matrix, a B matrix, and I've said that K is going to be K1, K2. And what I would like is a closed loop pole polynomial given by PC equals S squared plus 3S plus 2. First thing to do then is form the closed loop state transition matrix. So here it is. A minus BK is given by 1 minus K1, 2 minus K2 on the top row, and then 1, 0. And then define the actual pole polynomial and match it to the pole polynomial I want. So I'm going to compare what I've got with what I want. Well, what I've got is this polynomial here. Lambda squared minus 1 minus K1 lambda minus 2 minus K2. And what I want is lambda squared plus 3 lambda plus 2. So what you can see is this 3 has to be this coefficient and this 2 has to be this coefficient. So if I can choose k1 and k2 to achieve that then I will get the closed loop poles that I want. And of course that's straightforward using these identities here. 1 minus k1 is minus 3 and 2 minus k2 is minus 2. And what that does to your closed loop matrix is that 1 minus k1 becomes minus 3 and that 2 minus k2 becomes minus 2. A 3 by 3 example then. Here I've said choose k to set the closed loop poles at minus a half, minus 1, minus 1 1.5. And if you calculate the corresponding closed loop pole polynomial, it's given here s cubed plus 3s squared plus 2.75s plus 0.75. So I need to find the parameters k, which will give me this closed loop pole polynomial. First thing to do then, form the closed loop state transition matrix and see what it looks like. So here it is, and you notice I have 1 minus k1, 3 minus k2, and 3 minus k3 along the top row. So next, define the actual pole polynomial I get from this, and match it to the pole polynomial I want, which is PC. So the actual pole polynomial is given here. You can see it's lambda cubed minus 1 minus k1 lambda squared minus 3 minus k2 lambda minus 3 minus k3. And what I want is lambda cubed plus 3 lambda squared plus 2.75 lambda plus 0.75. So essentially, I'm saying I want this 1 minus k1 to be minus 3. I want this 3 minus k2 to be minus 2.75. And I want this 3 minus k3 to be 0.75. And you can see those parameters are given up here. So I can solve that very simply by writing 1 minus k1 is minus 3, 3 minus k2 minus 2.75, and so on. So in summary, we've introduced the concepts of state feedback with a control canonical form. And what we've said is when a system is in control canonical form, every coefficient of the closed loop pole polynomial can be defined as desired, and that's the key thing. You can define them all independently and easily using state feedback. This means that every closed loop pole can be placed exactly as you want. However, there's a bit of a warning here. You should note that being able to place the poles where you want is not the same as knowing where to place them. And if you choose to place the poles in the wrong place, you might not get good overall behaviour.